We want to introduce you to the new 2022 BC-8 and it's very similar to the 2021 and 2020 except for we've added uh, a uh, much better gas gauge that uh, measures your gas just fine and, and it's not as easy to blow out and also if you decide to go with a natural gas setup you can buy the kit that allows you to go to the 2.5 kPa gauge. This is a 5 kPa gauge for uh, propane. And if you look up just a little bit, not sure if the camera is showing that very well, you can see our new uh, heavy duty uh, chaff fans. And these don't need clean quite as often as the others, uh, and they got a little bit more power than previous models. Other than that, uh, you pretty much got all the same features. It might have been a while since you've uh, uh, looked into the uh, BC-8, so we'll cover a couple points with you. Taking you to the back, this of course is your uh, fan to keep the electrical room clean or uh, cool during roasting and when cooling down. This is your uh, drum speed control and these will all have little markers on them. This is your plug for your uh, chaff fan and there's an on off switch on that so that you can turn it off uh, in between roasts without having to turn the roaster off so you can empty your chaff unit by sucking it out with a shop vac or brushing it out with a brush. This is your USB port uh, so that you can plug in and uh, use with Artisan or with Cropster. The, also the uh, BC line can be done via Bluetooth if your uh, laptop or computer has that feature, which most, most do these days. If you look down, you'll see there's a, a uh, pilot light gauge or valve, I should say. You probably can't see it very well from here, but it's right over here. You will turn this valve open all the way because when you start your roaster, if you've watched any of our videos since 2018, you'll light the pilot light first before you uh, turn on the gas in the front. In fact, there's a sticker on the front that warns you not to open the gas valve in the front until that pilot light's lit. Pretty much other than that, everything's the same as it's been since 2020. So uh, we're going to just take you through a little roast. Just to refresh your memory, if you haven't used a or watch the video or use one in a while. This is your power button. This is your igniter. Also says roasting. This is cooling for your cooling fan. Emergency shut off, which uh, hopefully you'll never need. Button for starting the timer and stopping the timer. And then to reset the timer, you got the RST button on the timer itself. And then you've got the uh, mixing buttons for the mixing arms. So to turn on your machine, you power it on with the power button. You should have your fan on. If not, check the back button that it's lit up in green. And uh, if you've got your gas line turned on, you're ready to hit the igniter button while this valve is closed to light the uh, pilot light. It's been a while since we've shown you how the pilot light lights on. I'm not sure how with the reflection you're going to be able to see that, but with your uh, valve off in the front, you hit the uh, roasting button while your gas valve is open on your propane or else uh, natural gas line. You may need to adjust the airflow. As you can see, the alarm went off because it didn't light within the three or four seconds. Just turn off the uh, igniter, then flip it back on, and you may need to adjust the airflow when you're starting at the very first time either to cut it down or to increase it so that you're, uh, you'll have enough uh, gas going up. And it takes a minute for it to go from the, uh, there it goes. I don't know if it showed up on, yeah, there you can see. All right, let me see if I can focus in manually so you can get a better view. There you go, I think that's a little bit better. And then you slowly turn on your gas valve in the front making sure you've got enough airflow, usually about two is what I started off with, uh, and then just slowly open that 
gas valve and you'll see the other burners light so there we go and so they're all lit right now so we're going to preheat the roaster and then we'll go from there okay hopefully you can see the burners while we're preheating and i've got it up to about three and a half kpa if i was on a natural gas roaster i would probably have the two actually it's a two uh, kpa gauge because you never really go over about 1.75 or two on natural gas and this would probably be set more at about one one and a half to preheat I keep my airflow low while I'm preheating uh, somewhere between one and two because you want most of the heat to build up inside the drum you don't want to be pulling that heat a lot of that heat out now and right now most of the heat is coming from conductive heat the flame hitting the uh, drum as the drums turning and this is a double wall roaster so it's going to take a little bit longer for it to get its true temperature now you may be seeing these temperatures flying and right now you can see the bean temperature way above the airflow because we've got the airflow cut down but keep in mind those are not the true temperatures or that's not the true temperatures of the metals in there which is what you're focusing on it's just the the, the heat hitting that probe as it passes by and then the, the probe at the top at the exhaust uh, is what you're seeing right there. So a lot of people will preheat their roaster for 20 minutes or so. It depends in part on the ambient temperature of where you're at. Here in Arizona, I rarely ever have to preheat a roaster for more than 10 minutes. Uh, but you can check that after you've heated it. And I always take it on the first uh, preheat way above, but I. I want my charge temperature to be which a lot of times my charge temperature is between 350 and 400 so I might take this thing up initially to 450 475 knowing that that's really not what the metals are and then cut off the uh, gas cut down the airflow see how quickly it drops in about two minutes and that usually will stabilize to where I have a pretty good idea of what the metal temperatures are uh, so that I can be ready to charge. Today you're going to be seeing us just do a uh, sample test with just four pounds of uh, Papua New Guinea. So we'll let this preheat and then we'll get into that. Okay, so I've taken this up to, well I'm getting ready to take it up to about 450 on the bean temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the uh, gas, turn down my airflow to practically zero, a little bit of airflow is still going to get in, but you're going to see these numbers quickly drop. And our focus is going to be on the BT or the bean temperature probe to see after about two minutes where it balances out at. If it's in my 350 to 400 range, I may go ahead and ch charge my beans. If not, I may preheat it a little bit longer. And if this is in focus, you can see I've let it go about two minutes and it's right in the 370. 675 bracket so I'm pretty comfortable with knowing that that's right around the range of what the uh, uh, metals are so I'm going to go ahead reset my timer charge my beans about four pounds of uh, popping and getting and then I'm going to go ahead and kick back my igniter on with all the gas but I'm going to cut the gas back to about to start off with and we're going to watch to see where it, the turnaround is as well as the time it takes for the turnaround and then we may decide to adjust uh, our gas uh, up or down with this amount of uh, coffee it'll probably be down but we'll see so we'll just kind of keep an eye on that for a minute Usually it's around a minute and 15 seconds, but you know, it all depends on how you go about your roasting. Some people will turn off their gas for 30 or 45 seconds when they first charge the beans with the idea that the uh, heat will balance out. Here we go, right at about a minute and 13 minutes, 14 seconds, it bottomed out at 183.3 or 4. Now it's going to start climbing. And now at this point, 
if we had artisan attached to it, in a minute or so, it would give us a predictive feature telling us, okay, what, when will it, when is expected, if we leave it as it is, to hit 330, which is the end of the drying phase, and then from there, we can uh, adjust our heat accordingly. But I did not hook up artisan for this test, which I should have, and so I'm just going to go by my normal instincts on this. So we'll just watch it for a minute. I'm going to flip the camera back on to, as we go to the next section. Just to give you a few details, I have the uh, airflow at, set at about 2. My drum speed is at, is at about 70% or if, if yours says 1 through 10 it would be 7. It should be 70%. And you can see our rate of rise is not rapid. Um, we're at two, uh, almost three minutes, two minutes, 50 seconds, 233 degrees. We have climbed about 50 degrees since the turnaround. So I might actually bump up my gas just a little bit. I'm going to take it up to 2.5 kPa, which obviously if you're doing natural gas, you might be going from a one to one and a quarter kPa or something like that. And uh, we'll just see how it goes over the next minute. My goal is, and it all is part of the artistry, but my goal is to try to end the drying phase in, depending on the size roaster, in this size roaster it might be five to six minutes. Also I want to keep an eye on uh, if I think there's a lot of chaff build up already in this, which right now I don't see, but if I did, I might bump the airflow up a little bit more. And there's nothing wrong with bumping up the airflow momentarily and bumping it back down, although if you're recording an artisan profile, it may mess that up for a moment. But I think we're doing pretty good. We're at about almost at 275 at four minutes, so uh, I think we're going to see uh, probably 3.30, a little after five minutes, and then I'll bump back down my uh, gas, and I'll bump up my airflow a little bit. In fact, I'm going to bump up my airflow flow to three right now, although it still doesn't look like uh, this is a super high chaff, amount of chaff in the uh, drum. Yeah, so we're getting we're doing pretty good here. We're at four minutes thirty-eight seconds, two hundred and ninety-four degrees. So we're right in that range, maybe about a five and a half minute uh, a drying phase time. My airflow is just a little over three. My drum speed is at seven, my KPA is at two point five, and I'm using propane. So here we are. We're at five minutes, we're at about 308 degrees. So we're looking at probably close to five and a half minutes on the end of the drying phase, which is a comfortable place to be. Could I have caused it to do it in five minutes or under? Yes, but it's up to you how you want to do it. This is, the way you develop your profiles and your artistry is, is your work of art. It's not for me to tell you what you can and cannot do, unlike some folks might want to do. So here we are. Uh, we're at. We'll just tell you we're at. Uh, we're going to be at 330 degrees at five minutes 51 seconds. So at this point, I'm actually wanting to cut down my gas. I'm going to cut it down to about 1.75. I'm going to open my airflow to about five, and I'm going to keep an eye on the rate of rise on the bean temperature. I'm not too worried about the rate of rise on the uh, environmental temperature, although it's still picking up quite well. It's at 374 while the bean temperature is at 345, six minutes, 24 seconds. We're going to take a look in the front of the roaster just to kind of give you a visual of what's going on. Uh, 
with the uh, the browning phase. Hopefully you can get a somewhat of a view. I didn't want to go in super close just so you could see some other things going on. But we're at 7 minutes, 10 seconds, 365 degrees on the BT, 388 on the ET. Three ninety on the BT. I'm sorry, on the ET. Three seventy-two on the BT, and we're just starting first crack. I'm going to bump up my airflow now to about six. I'm going to keep my gas where it is at one point seven five. At this point, some people like to bump up their drum speed a little bit, maybe to. 7.5 or maybe to 8. I bumped it up a little bit. As you can see, it's a nice light brown. Hopefully you can see it. Bumping my airflow up to 7. If I would have had the manual or the Magna Hela gauge or the mag airflow gauge attached to it, we could have talked more about airflow. We'll do that in other videos. But right now I just wanted to show you some uh, some of the new 2022 BCA. Yeah, so our drum uh, speed is at 7.5 or 75, depending on what system you use. And it's a nice light roast here. We're at 8 minutes 45 seconds, 394 degrees on the BT. Uh, we're 407 on the ET, and there are a lot of people that would drop this roast right now as a light roast. I like to go a little bit darker than this, so I'm probably going to take this one up to about 415 degrees. So we're at 9 minutes, 20 seconds, 403 degrees BT, 412 ET. The gas is still at 1.75. Airflow, I just moved it up to 7.5 from 7. And this is actually a pretty nice lighter roast for the, uh, kind of, I mean a medium. I'm almost at 415. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut off my gas and uh, let it flow to that. I'm going to turn on my mixing and cooling. And we're going to let the beans go. And that was only four pounds. You can do up to eight pounds in this roaster, but we were just doing a test run. Um, now that the door is closed, you can charge your next uh, roast. And as you can see, since I've turned off the gas, I'm going to take you over to the controls. We've, we've turned off the gas, so you can see the temperature's dropping. Of course, I left the airflow up. If I wanted to slow that down, I could bump the airflow close more, and it would slow should slow that down some. But you're ready to... You pretty much when you when you finish and close the drum door on a uh, uh, batch, uh, you're ready to drop the next batch. And pretty much after about two or three minutes, your beans should pretty much be cooled off. Which these are, if you want to leave the, the fan on, you can and just turn off the mixing arm until you're ready to uh, drop them into a bucket or whatnot. And I want to show you a new bucket system we're using here in a minute. So I wanted to show you something. It's a new system by a company called uh, Planetary Design uh, Airscape. And these are uh, basically uh, lids that allow you to push all the uh, uh, air out of them after you put your coffee in a food grade bucket like this. This is a five gallon bucket we just got from Amazon, but you get seven gallon ones. A five gallon bucket will hold about 15 pounds. A seven gallon bucket will hold about 20 pounds. So basically uh, what I want to do is just dump my uh, coffee into this bucket. This is pretty 
tip tool. Bear with me for a minute. And then all you do, if you can see me, it's what I'm doing at all, is you press the inner part of this uh, handle, which allows the air to go out, and then you just push this in all the way down, and now you've uh, locked all your beans in, and you're keeping them nice and airtight, which is still allowing it to degas while you do other things throughout the day or whatever, so you don't have to worry about immediately uh, bagging your coffee or worrying about it uh, uh, not being stored properly. So hopefully you like that and we think it's a great idea. We'll put it on our website, uh, Planetary Designs. You can buy them by the, I think, a three pack or more. And uh, they're really a good product and they'll last for years. They seem to be really high quality. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe and move forward. Thank you.